She said, you're just, you're just a stupid, insensitive male chauvinist pig. <laughs> yeah, you're right, I'm sorry. <laughs> she said, you're just saying that, so I'll shut up. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> I just don't argue. Like I said, you don't win an argument anyway, especially with a woman, because women cheat. <laughs> women cheat. Sure you do. Oh, the first thing you throw up is the truth. <laughs> if that doesn't work, you bring in logic and reason and fair play. Ain't a guy in here can sound of that kind of pressure. <laughs> oh, hey, don't bring up the truth. Okay. But, see, we don't mean to be that way. It's just the way we are. Right, guys? Yeah. See, now women, see, guys are what? They tell us all the time, we're <laughs> I could tell her that, I was on the freeway. <laughs> I didn't do that. But women have PMS. Guys are <laughs> Women have PMS. Okay? See, when I was in high school and college, it was just cramps. <laughs> then it became a syndrome. When did this happen? I must have been out of town or something. I don't remember. <laughs> You guys had a convention, you said, let's make it a syndrome. Okay, fine, it's a syndrome. <laughs> but I think it's important to note here, ladies, at the same time that women came up with the uh, PMS, men came up with the ESPN. So it's sort of a trade off. <laughs> True. It's like, it's like guys are saying, okay, fine, you can have your little crisis. <laughs> I've got kickboxing on top. <laughs> You give a guy this, a beer, he's happy. Of course, he's got to have a television to go with. <laughs> They'll sit there and run through the channels, belts, drink beer, cut one every once in a while. <laughs> in fact, if you could hook this up to the sound of a belt or a fart, you'd make billions. <laughs> right. <laughs> Look at that, baby. I run through 67 channels in there. I'm going to try for HBO, man. Damn, showtime. <laughs> but then a woman comes in, you go, yeah, 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 there ain't a guy in here, there ain't a guy in here, I guarantee you, there ain't a guy in here out there who hasn't done this at least once. When she turned around to walk out of the room, went. <laughs> see, guys, and I know, I'll tell you another thing about guys. Guys like space for some reason. See, I, you remember guys when you were single, you lived alone, you had... Space. You had the bathroom to yourself, right? You remember that? You had like maybe one towel in there. And it didn't match a damn thing in there. <laughs> probably didn't even buy it. You probably stole it from a hotel, right? <laughs> and you never washed it. Theory being hell, only time I ever used it, I'm clean. <laughs> and we didn't bother with towel racks. We didn't bother with towel racks, we just threw it on the floor. <laughs> After a while, you could just prop it in the corner, it'd be there. <laughs> Women invented towel racks. Because I drop a towel on the floor, my wife goes ballistic. She goes, just who do you think is going to pick that up? Just who do you think is going to pick that up? I go, well, I will. <laughs> Next time I need it. Or you will if you can't wait till then. <laughs> That's why countries invade each other, because guys, the leaders are married and they have no space. <laughs> well, we invade another country, then we'll have space. But you, know, you get married, your wife backs that truck up to the front door, starts offloading all that equipment that goes into the bathroom. Hair dryers, hair frizzers, hair fibrillators, hair wetters, hair moisturizers, you know, mirrors. And all this. There's more stuff in my bathroom than NASA uses to launch the damn shuttle. <laughs> you know, I got like six square inches. I got a little razor, a little bar of soap, a wash rag, like a printer, you know, it's right here. Earth stuff is everywhere. It's like, 
Like right here is like 50 or 60 bottles of cologne down here, 40 or 50 different kinds of lipstick down under here, 40 or 50 different kinds of rouge and makeup over here, 40 or 50 different bottles of ice out of here, 40 or 50 different kinds of mascara. She says, I want you to love me for me. Who the f are you? I don't know. So I never argue, I never, and they're always in there too, aren't they? Always in there doing stuff. <laughs> My lights are dimming, you know, you go, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> and you can't go in there and ask them if they're ready, right? You go, you can't go in there, are you almost ready? If I was ready, I'd be out there. Okay, 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 fine. All right. And then they come, they come out of the bathroom, you know, after they've been in there for three hours, they come out and stand there and go, I look ridiculous. <laughs> so I, so I just look, yeah, you're right, let's go. <laughs> what do you mean? Now she's mad. <laughs> the matter now. <laughs> I never go shopping with my wife. Always agree with her, never go shopping with her. That's my advice. Reduce the stress in your marriage. Never go, never, they always agree, never go shopping. Because see, women don't want guys to go shopping anyway, right? Because we always screw it up. Guys don't know how to shop. We don't. Because you know, 10 or 15 minutes into it, we've bought something and ready to go. <laughs> that evidently ain't the way it works. Yeah. Yeah. We well, see if a guy leaves ESPN, he's got an idea of something he wants to buy. He's got a pretty good idea of where it may be located. <laughs> he will drive by the most direct route to that place, pointing out the assholes <laughs> on the way. <laughs> he will go into the store, buy the item, leave. 10 or 15 minutes. Women, on the other hand, have no idea what they're looking for. They don't know where it is. They don't know what it is. They don't know what color it is. But I have a theory. I think it's hidden between dresses <laughs> in malls. Because they will look between every damn dress on the rack. <laughs> What are you looking for? I don't know. It's not here. See, and I don't like to go to malls. It's in clothes, you know, it's, I don't know, it, it confuses me. I go inside, there are trees in here. I like to watch people in malls. You tell a lot about people by the way they walk through the mall. Who are these guys though? I've never figured these guys out. You've seen these guys? They're like real tall. They've got like IQs of old 390 or something, you know, because they got like slide rules and computers and rockets and pins and all this stuff. But they walk like this. Get out of their way. Then you get the young guys. The young guys walk through the malls like this. See? Because they got hopes and dreams and aspirations. <laughs> Testosterone. <laughs> this, you see what gets there first? This part of it right here. This is, uh, this is what leads most young guys around right here. It's like, oh no, we're not going that way. We're going this way. This is where we're going. I guess I'll be back in a little while. <laughs> then, then you get the older guys, you know, the guys that are a little older, a little wiser, guys that have seen life, the guys that have looked life in the face. You know, had life just kind of walk up to them and go, <laughs> these years. <laughs> See, I always thought they were bigger than this. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I was kind of hoping to hang on to him a little while longer than this, but thanks a lot. You know the guys I'm talking about. The guys that have been kicked and beaten. The guys that have been humiliated and defeated. 
The guys that have been married. <laughs> Just jokes, ma'am. <laughs> they walk through them all like this. You know, all you gotta do with one of these guys is walk by them and go, dear, and they'll hand you money. <laughs> Try it. Dear. Take it all. Here, take the keys. <laughs> these are just jokes. <laughs> then, you, then you, I don't know which is worse. You have there a guy there with his wife or a guy there without his wife, who, you know, without a woman there to tell him what to do, he just kind of walks around in a circle like this. Huh? <laughs> Mm. It's like a dog has been staked out in the backyard, you know? They're not, they're not going anywhere. Take the leash off of them, but they're not going anywhere. And you can always tell a married guy because he's there with his wife and they're shopping. And the guy has what, maybe a four minute attention span, lady? Something like that? I ain't talking about sex, I'm talking about his attention span. It's like four minutes, you know? And the wife will be there shopping. He'll stand there, he'll. After about four minutes, he becomes like a base runner. He'll take a lead off. He'll go. <laughs> She'll look him back. She'll do this. He'll for you a secret. You know the secret? Women don't design those underwear. It's men. There ain't a woman on this planet that would ever come up with the idea of crotchless panties. It's a guy. Laboratories. I think crotchless panties would be good. Oh, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, we take the we take the hypotenuse for the square. The, yeah, we put a crotchless panty right in the crotch. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Brown with holes in them. <laughs> but the thing is, women go buy that stuff because men put the pressure on to to do it, right? Guys, you know, won't you go in there and get some of those crotchless pants? <laughs> Why don't you go get some? <laughs> Guys have assless panties. We call them jockey straps. You know? <laughs> Whoever invented that thing, I'll never know. I don't know what was in their mind either. I think that jockey was doing a little bit more than riding that horse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, I'm not here to cast, cast a spurgeon. People think, you know, people think somebody who's bisexual in the South is a guy who likes both sheep and cattle, okay? I'm not arguing. <laughs> you think, people think Southerners have, you know, signs in, their, in the bars in the South, this use for bud, you know? <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> yeah, like, you won't tell it tomorrow and not give me credit for it. <laughs> Guys put pressure on women to buy that stuff. You know, there's not a woman anywhere out there in this country who at one point in her relationship, however long or short it is, she hasn't turned to her boyfriend, husband, significant other, cousin, whatever, and said, <laughs> and said you want me to wear what? <laughs> High heel shoes, a garter belt, a see-through raincoat, and a tennis racket. <laughs> thinking, what kind of damn childhood did this guy have, you know? <laughs> but guys are persistent. They won't give up. We will not give up. We will hound you to the end of the world. Oh, come on, please. Just try it one time. Come on, just put it on. It'll be good. Because <laughs> guys have sex drive. That's what they call it. They call it sex drive. And it isn't just men. It's the male of every species on this planet. I was watching the Discovery Channel. <laughs> you ever watch? That's a great, oh, I love that. The lions of the Serengeti. The lions of the Serengeti lie out in the heat of the midday sun. And the lions are going. <laughs> Where the hell is that guy? <laughs> we find him, we'll eat his ass, British accent and all. 
But they're talking about the lions are stalking, and there are these deer that they're stalking, these red-tailed deer on the Serengeti Plain in Africa, and the deer are in rut. They're trying to mate. And I know this is going to come as a shock to you ladies, but it says that the male deer comes so, becomes so single-minded in purpose when he's trying to mate that he thinks of nothing else. He won't eat. He won't drink. He won't sleep. He won't do anything. All he's got on his mind is sex. That's it. And he's trying to, he's trying to mount this female deer. He's trying to mate with his female deer. <laughs> Did you see the show or is we talking about your husband? <laughs> He's trying to mount this female deer, and there's a lion 10 feet from him. A lion. He doesn't even, he's got no, he's totally oblivious. got no idea. A lion 10 feet. He's trying, monkeys are in the tree going, hey, hey, man, there's a lion, a lion, right there. Look, the female deer, she knows that there. She's going, stop it, there's a lion right there. The deer's got it. He's going, oh, come on, baby, we got time. Come on, come on. He's got no clue there's a lion. persistence that sex drive so you find we find and we finally we will wear you down you know however long it takes guys will just go come on please just try it on one time finally you'll go oh all right <laughs> you get it on you get on a high heel shoe the garter belt the see through they got the tennis racket <laughs> line comes right there. <laughs> <laughs> or you'll just stand there and you go here Well, damn, move around or something. You, know? <laughs> you want me to move around? Bang there. Bang, there you go. I'm moving around. No. It says sex drive is the continuation of the species. That's the thing. I mean, that brings me to kids. I have kids. Kids cause stress. I got two kids. One's 15, one's five. <laughs> yeah, Planned Parenthood. <laughs> hey, I told you we were persistent. I had to get my racket restrung. <laughs> Fifteen and five. And it's tough being a parent in these days and time, isn't it? Oh, man. It's hard being a parent in, the, in America in modern times. I spent like three weeks child-proofing my home. They still get in, you know, but... <laughs> It's tough being, now the 15 year old, he's a guy. Well, they're both guys. The 15 year old is a teenager, right? See, when, when they're small and they're little and they're good and they're cute and they're sweet, we put up with a lot more crap from them when they, till, when they get this big, right? Yeah. We'll put up with just about anything. It's like, he's got, hey, hey, hey. Hi there, look what I, I drew a picture for you. Look, I drew a picture. See, picture, I drew a picture. Well, the other one's like, oh, yeah! Oh, Nintendo! <laughs> Gee, I wonder which one I'd rather hang out with here, yeah, you know? <laughs> it's tough being a parent of a... Of a see, like uh, my son, he's, you know, they're, you, they said you lose space when you get married. You have kids, you lose parts of your home. <laughs> and your mind. There are parts of my house I don't even go into anymore. <laughs> they're his. <laughs> you know, his room. Oh, man. Talk about toxic waste. <laughs> Jeez, there's all kind of weird stuff. And you open, they ever open the door, it's like opening the door to Dante's Inferno, you know. <laughs> Don't go in there. <laughs> and you know, like with teenagers, one minute they're like real serene, everything's just like, yeah, everything's cool, and everything's in like, <laughs> It's like, there's nothing in between. It's like either real nice or ah, they're out there. Like I go in the door, open the door. He's sitting in there listening to Metallica playing Nintendo. And I go, hey, uh, supper's ready. What do you want? <laughs> supper's ready. You <Yeah>, food? <laughs> what? You know, and then you get into that father thing where you go, get any homework? What? Homework? Then give me any. Yeah, they didn't give me any A's, B's, or C's either, did they? <laughs> Uh, hexagonal birth chambers, you know, and they're perfectly hexagonal and they lay the eggs in there. Well, they don't lay the eggs. They get one bee to lay the eggs. They call her the queen. 
but she's not a queen. I mean, she works her ass out. She's the egg bitch. All she does, no, no, she lays like 1,500 eggs a day every day for the rest of your life. And you know she bitches about it. I thought I'd do it later. I don't get to go anywhere. I don't get to do anything. It's like egg after egg after egg. All day long. I don't know how to get to do it. Other bees are walking around going, oh, Jesus. <laughs> but they lay the eggs in there. And then when the eggs hatch, you know, they're, they're larvae, they're little larvae, they're cute bee, they're little bee, bee babies is what they are. They're little, like, our, like, you know, the equivalent of our little babies, they're cute. The bees feed them every day, they, they nurture them, there's some sort of interaction. The bees stick their head in there, they touch them with the antenna, they feed them. Then one day, the larva starts to pupate. It changes, it goes through a metamorphosis. It's like our teenage years. <laughs> the bee goes and sticks his head in the birth chamber one day and the bee goes, what do you want? The bee doesn't argue with it. The bee doesn't argue with it. The bee throws in a bunch of food and walls it up in the hive. Walls it up in the hive. And it stays in there till it becomes an adult, at which time it chews its way out and goes immediately to work in the hive. That's a good program. You got to do See, with my children, with my son, See, like one day I'm sitting there, you know, he's laying on a couch there. We're watching TV. It's a Saturday afternoon. He's got his feet on the couch. Okay, okay, fine. His shoes are a little dirty, muddy. Okay, whatever. But, you know, it ain't, you know, hey, I'm not complaining. I mean, God knows, you know, the kid it works hard. You know, it's, here it is, 1 o'clock. He got up. He's been up since, you know, 12, 15. And he had to come all the way from his room and flop down here on the couch. You know, that was, that was tough enough right there, you know. Sitting there watching TV. My wife is in the kitchen, apple Okay, she's having some kind of damn conniption fit in there. She's going, Blake, 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 Blake. I go, what? Come here. What did I do now? So I get up, I walk into the kitchen. I go, yeah. And she goes, look at him in there. What about him? He's got his feet on the couch. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> she said, well, go in there and tell him take his feet off of that couch. Wait a minute. You call me all the way in here to go back in there to tell him that, why don't you just tell... Yeah, you're right. Now I go back in there, I sit down. I don't command, I don't demand, I don't yell, I don't scream, I don't curse. I simply say, son, get your feet off the couch. Now, if I told anybody here to get your, do that, to get your feet off the couch, they would get their feet off the couch, but not a teenager. No. All of a sudden, I thought I was talking to a human being. Now I'm talking to some sort of prehistoric lizard, you know, because, no, because it's hissing at me now. It's like, <sighs> <sighs> I thought I was talking to a normal teenager. Now I'm in the middle of some Wagnerian opera. You know, this is some sort of brooding prince, some sort of misunderstood, you know, abused, brooding Danish prince. Dark clouds are looming on the horizon, you know. Music wells up. He's going, my father. My father. And my wife's in there. She's got metal on her horns on her head. Going, Make him move his feet. Make him move his feet. Make a moving feet. My father won't let me ruin the furniture. Make a moving feet. Make a moving feet. What am I doing? Come here, son. Come here. Hey, come here. Come here. Here's your room. Go on in there. Some Big Macs and Burger Kings. <laughs> come out when you got a job. I've enjoyed talking to you. I've enjoyed being with you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Good night.